Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Line Change, the NHL betting podcast from the Action Network. My name is Michael Leboff. Joining me, as always, are Nick Martin and Tim Kalinowski. Uh, together, the three of us will break down the four-game slate on Wednesday, April the 17th. This could be our last regular season preview. Um, if everything shakes out and we can record a playoff preview and, and give you guys uh, preview se- series by series and all the game ones um, before Thursday, like that would be wonderful and give uh, the podcast as much of a shelf life as possible. So that's what we're we're gunning for here. Um, but we still have to get through these games. And why don't you know, we've got a an absolute beautiful, beautiful contest on Wednesday night. The game of the season, I would call it. Uh, I think it's uh, a wonderful opportunity to bet the Coyotes one last time at Mullet Arena. They are hosting the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, the Oilers, of course, are minus 205 and the Oilers uh, Coyotes plus 170 total six and a half as an Islander fan um, my team's future on Long Island was not very secure for most of my life Uh, so I do feel terrible for Coyotes fans I think the thing that gets overlooked here is it's not just like the game nights and going to the game or watching the game on TV but it's all the fun stuff in between games that you get to do as a fan with your team talking about drafts and lineup decisions scratches injuries all that stuff that was the stuff that I feared the most. So I do think that uh, Islander fans are kind of in a in a unique position to um, commiserate with with Coyotes fans. So if anyone listening, I do feel terribly for you. This sucks. Um, that said, I am stoked to bet this team one last time at Mullet Arena. I think that they'd probably go down as the team that we've bet the most uh, on this podcast individually um, or combined, I should say, uh, throughout the two years uh, for Nick and I. Uh, even when it was me and so money, uh, the Coyotes would always come up because of the prices. And this is a poetic way to to, to cap that off without trying to minimize what's going on. So uh, I think this will be a great effort from the Coyotes. It should be a, a crazy atmosphere. Nick, uh, what are your thoughts here, Arizona and Edmonton? Yeah, I think the first disclosure is there's no way we we're ever going to bet Edmonton here. I I would it just wouldn't have mattered what the price is. But I actually think that the opening numbers are legitimate value bets on Arizona so I don't have to just sit here like I'll put that disclosure out there because yeah you know obviously we were just not going to fade them but I think that plus 170 the current price is really like there's a lot of value at that number there's who knows what Edmonton will do with their lineup in this game um and Arizona's playing been playing legitimately quite well you look at the last 15 games they're above 50 percent in terms of their expected goal share I think their plays looked about that good they're six and four over the last 10. So you don't really need to reach that hard to say that this is a, a pretty good number in a spot that we always wanted to bet Arizona. Anyways, obviously, you know, they're going to be up for it. They've been, you know, 21 and 19 at home this year, which I would assume is profitable yet again without looking. Um, but yeah, I, I just think we're getting a really good number to target the Coyotes in a spot where we always wanted to back them anyways. So um, yeah, give me the yotes for sure. Yeah, you're you're always gonna remember. Uh, hey, I, I remember betting uh, that last game at Mullet Arena. Um, you know, uh, again, yotes. I've been to Mullet Arena this year. Um, yotes fans, I I do sympathize with you. It's it was a great time. I love Arizona. I don't know who wouldn't want to play hockey and golf and hang out in Arizona. Um, and for the Edmonton perspective here, guys, obviously the Canucks. Uh, flames game will be done by the time people hear this uh so vancouver if they get one point are they are they good um against calgary in terms of the pacific is that the situation you guys see um i would presume so i honestly haven't even looked at it because i just marked it as over once yes. the canucks yeah, won it is uh, they because it's it's three points technically right yeah. now yep the canucks right. need just and one point rings. on tuesday night to clinch and then the oilers can kind of rest easy knowing uh, that they've right. got nothing to play for in the final two games, uh, which are back to back, um, in Arizona and then Colorado. So, um, yeah, that's, that's not great. Yeah, but, that's what I was getting at, and that you should feel even better if Vancouver uh, gets their one point here, because um, then it really means nothing to Edmonton. So, yeah, and again, and just the price alone, uh, they just they go beat San Jose like twenty five to one. Um, you know, you you you're trying to <laughs> zig and zag here. Yeah, I do. I'm right with you too, Tim. Like, I think anyone who's been 
to Arizona and been to Mullet feels like there's it's so easy to get attached to the team. I feel the same thing. Um, so I really hope that they, you know, eventually get a team back down there and that they wrap up, you know, this little run at Mullet with a win. That would be uh, nice um, and obviously doesn't change anything. And uh, once again, we do commiserate with uh, with you guys. It sucks. Um, and with that, we'll move on to uh, the other three games on the docket. A lot to go over with these. We'll start with the Penguins and Islanders. Pittsburgh is on Long Island as a minus 120 favorite right now. Isles are even money. Total five and a half. The Islanders clinched the number three spot in the Metropolitan Division by way of their win against the Devils on Monday night. So they are going to take on the Carolina Hurricanes again in round one. Um, the Penguins will know if this game is meaningful uh, by the time, remember about 9.30 Eastern time on Tuesday night. They need a parlay. Uh, basically, they just need the Flyers to beat the Washington Capitals, and they need the Montreal Canadiens to beat the Detroit Red Wings. Easier said than done, of course. Um and then if it does matter, if this game does have any meaning for Pittsburgh, this line will absolutely take off. Um, I, I would say that. So uh, hopefully you are aware of that situation. And if you like the Penguins in a vacuum, you've already bet it. Um, I will say there will be some situations with the Islanders. I think you can exploit um, Kyle Palmieri looking for 30 goals. Uh, I would imagine he'll be one of the guys playing. He's had a, a great season, a great stretch run for the Islanders. I think think that Matt Barzell and Bo Horvat will likely come out of the lineup. Uh, it will likely be Ilya Sorokin in goal. So you can uh, target uh, some guys who are maybe moving up a, a role or two. At, well, Oliver Wallstrom, I would assume, comes in. He would be my favorite anytime goal scorer prop because I think he will be a long number, and I think he'll play on the first line. Uh, Hudson Fashing and Simon Holmstrom will be the other guys who perhaps the, the books don't adjust to uh, in, in terms of elevated roles as well. Uh, so those that's be how I would play it. I think that if you had to make me pick a side, I would I would go with Pittsburgh here. Nick, what about you? Yeah, I'm pretty high on the Penguins, regardless of what happens Tuesday night. I was happy to lock in minus 115 today. I think that's a, a really solid bet, regardless of how it goes. Chances are this game won't mean anything for Pittsburgh, but that's also not going to stop them from from coming out and playing to the best of their ability. It's the final game of the year. Um. And you know how we how these guys are. So I think it's a little, uh, you know, I don't think you need to worry too much. And then, like you said, if the Islanders sit anybody at all, which it seems quite probable that they will, then you're really happy with that number. Um, so I really just think hopefully those prices hang out. I would go down to minus 125 pending the Islanders lineup. Um, it's another one of these ones that's a little annoying to record the day before. But yeah, I, I really think that there's not too much to worry about from the Penguin side of things like whether it means anything or not, this looks like a pretty good number to get versus the Islanders. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm on the Penguins here. Yeah, and, you know, with the Penguins likely being um, done for by the time this game is played, it's basically the handicap is, like, the Islanders will be sitting guys, and we think, uh, for, like, on to bigger and better things. Where it's Pittsburgh, it'll be like, you know, we expect everyone to play, and it'll be like, hey, just one last go around here. So I think what that does is it still leads to Pittsburgh being um, a deserving favorite here. I'm on Pittsburgh as well for that reason. Like uh, just because Pittsburgh will likely be out of it. I don't think that means like, obviously the we're not going to get a game seven effort from them, but I don't think they're just going to flat out not show up. Yep. I think that is fair. Uh, not showing I mean, up. I, I was going to say at the end of the day, this game means the same thing to both of them if the pens are eliminated. Yeah. So you don't right. need to go like too far down that line. Um, the next game we'll talk about, uh, is an absolutely confusing one to handicap because it won't really mean anything for either side, but I do think Tim, you have the right idea with the Leafs and the bolts, uh, Toronto's plus plus one ten. This is in Tampa. The bolts are minus minus one thirty. total is six and a half tune up games for both of them. They won't be playing each other in round one. Uh, so that's takes a little bit of the awkwardness out of it. Uh, it could be a situation where you look for, uh, similar to like what I was saying with the Islanders, some guys in elevated roles who normally aren't, uh, and that's where you're going, Tim. Yeah, I mean, this game is, you said, it's certainly hard to handicap. And Tampa Bay has been, you know, it's been well noted for the last couple of weeks that they have um, 
played some musical chairs with their lineup and it's because of guys being injured. Uh, they've, they've really had to uh, mix things up. And one of the bene beneficiaries of that has been uh, Nick Robertson. And he, he's got three goals in his last five. Um, you know, he's, he's playing a, a regular shift pretty much, uh, you know, it doesn't get up to like the 20 minute range, but 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 11, 13. And so I'm going to take a flyer on him to score a goal in this game. Uh, be, you know, he's getting more opportunities. He's shooting the puck. Well, the guy wants to shoot the puck. And if you're, you know, getting into a situation where this guy might get more opportunities because one, the Leafs are banged up and two, they might be more inclined to rest guys. I think Robertson gets an opportunity and, you know, we all know the guy can shoot the puck. So I think it's like five fifty to one is what I might be looking at right now. But um, I honestly, because I want to, I like, I'm going to want to watch the game and pay attention. I'll just, I'm going to just blindly bet it no matter what for uh, like a quarter unit. Yeah, I think that's a, a really solid angle. Uh, Robertson ranks fourth on the Leafs with his 1.37 goals per 60. So he's just been scoring just at such a high rate, like Tim said, when he does get in the lineup. Um, and a lot of times that has still been pretty far down the lineup, which is accounted for by the, the per 60, but also he might get played with better players here which should help that rise up a little bit and the maybe interesting power thing, play maybe some power play too yes i want to see like i think tampa's got to sit there guys you would think but it's hard to say and and some teams like i do see like like aside from just letting kucherov rack up some points uh there's the argument that some players kind of prefer to come into a little less rusty but um i still wouldn't expect them to play and i, I like we talked about this Today, I don't think Matthews should play whether he scores, you know, his 60 or 70th goal tonight, uh, whether he does or not. I think the decision you would, you would imagine has already been made, I, I think, because if you're trying to win a cup, it feels weird that you're like making that decision based on that. But anyways, I, I feel like those are kind of all the the balls up in the air and why this game's a little weird to handicap um, as with a lot of them. But I, I think Tim's outlined a good angle. Uh, all right, we'll wrap up with the Blues and Stars. St. Louis plus 185, Dallas minus 215, total of six here. Technically, the Stars need to wrap up number one uh, seed overall in the conference, but I just think regardless, um, you know, that's not all that important compared to just keeping guys fresh and healthy and whatever. Uh, I do, I think I would like the Blues here regardless, if, you know, even if this game meant a ton to the Stars because uh, St. Louis has just been feisty, man. They just uh, have played hard down the stretch they pulled some upsets uh they are uh they have one last game uh on the season um why not go out with a bang so yeah st louis at plus 185 i think anything better than plus 180 is fine on the blues here what about you nick yeah i'm less committed at at this point still i just think the stars are too far far beyond the blues that this would be fair so i'll i guess we'll kind of see the news and and i'll i'll be keeping my out on uh the morning skate and all that stuff and seeing which goalies come in because I think that I just don't quite want to fade Dallas. If they have all their guys going in kind of their final tune up game here, but um, not enough for me to have like a, a bet or conviction towards either side at this point. Yeah. I also want to note that uh, I'm a bit of a moron. The Robertson five fifty line is for the Florida game uh, tonight. The Tampa one. I was, well, I was just, yeah. I was going to say that's usually what it's been around. So I was like, I don't know if he's looked this up already or what, but no, that was um, yeah. I'm using the action app and I just had it clicked on Florida. So Tampa's not uh, come out yet, but with that said, um, I would probably lean blues here uh, to leave off, take a shot on them. I mean, like, Dallas is nothing to play for. And, you know, Nick, you said that even if Dallas kind of sits their guys, they're, they're bottom, like they're, I guess, you know, fringe guys are still like can fill out a better roster than St. Louis. So, um, but again, at this price, like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get crazy with it. It's, uh, you know, only a couple more days before, before it really means something. Cool. Uh, yeah. So hopefully we'll have uh, a playoff preview pod for you as early as possible. We're going to try to record that as soon as everything's set in stone. Uh, but until then, for, for Nick and Tim, thank you so much for listening. Uh, this regular season, it's been full of ups and downs and twists and turns. Um, it's been something else, but I think we've we've done a pretty good job to get through it, uh, set everyone up for a good playoff run here. Um, and we also want to say thank you to our producer, Noah, for, for sticking with us this entire season as well. So best of luck. Hopefully everybody uh, has a good 
final couple days of the regular season. Hopefully the Coyotes kick us into the playoffs on a high note. Uh, but until then, thank you and good luck. 